Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name's jasonnewland.com and this is let me bore you to sleep.com and uh, please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes.com I'm bored with that now I'm gonna stop so oh. I was sitting in my big black squeaky chair that's falling apart and Andre's running around doing his thing but it is very early it's early evening it's in fact about 13 minutes past 8 p.m. Which is not normally a time that I would uh, make recordings. But I have been. I've been felt really ill the last few days. The last. I don't know, week or so, something like that. And spent a lot of time in bed. And subsequently ended up reversing my sleeping patterns. And the last probably six, possibly six days, I've been waking up early in the morning. And I've been feeling really tired about nine o'clock. In the evening. And last, uh, last night I went to bed about nine. Half nine, nine, something like that. And uh, got up about eight o'clock this morning. It's just really weird. It's for me because I have been sleeping I've been doing the opposite to this for it's well over a year it might be even longer it might be two years I don't know I lose track but it's been over a year that I've been the whole of 2019 plus month before that so well over a year been predominantly sleeping during the day and been awake all night till at the very er- latest, very earliest, latest, four o'clock in the morning, sometimes later, seven o'clock, sometimes even later than that. But generally, six or seven would be the cut off when I would go to bed. So, uh, I'd make my recordings in the middle of the night because it is quieter and I didn't realise I was more motivated to do it at night than when I'm awake during the day which is a bit unusual because that's why I bought the garden shed for my bedroom to have as a recording studio so that I can sit in there and make audios, recordings, regardless of the time of day and not have much in the way of background sound. But it, it turns out I don't want to be awake during the day. I really miss being awake during the night because I get so much more done. I get more work done on the websites. I make more recordings. Now, maybe part of the reason, it's it's a fairly valid reason that I've not made many recordings is 
because I've not felt well for it's hard to know how long but it's as long as I've been waking up so it's it kind of coincided with that because I was sleeping all the time so I was both physically and mentally just not well at the same time which is not always a great um, combination and I'm now feeling better mentally physically I feel better than I did but uh, tired a bit achy and stuff but but then I've been coughing a bit so which um, talking about coughing makes me want to cough coughing doesn't fit together with making recordings so yeah so that's where I've been that's why and also I was a little bit a little bit and I shouldn't really make a big deal of it but I was a little bit disappointed in Spreaker my podcast host for reducing my stats I lost um, 12,000 off the total stats since November last year so I was you know I reached the 5,000 the 500,000 mark um, probably about 10 days ago and then it went up to I think 517,000 and I woke up six I don't know what day it was six days ago <clears throat> excuse me and uh it gone down to 505,000 downloads I was fuming <laughs> there was smoke coming out of my ears and everything and I just oh, oh I just couldn't believe it just oh but you know what <laughs> I perhaps shouldn't make too much of a big deal about the stats. It just gives me a, a, a little bit of a buzz when I see the stats gone up. So, <sighs> however, the last few days the stats have been fairly good considering. I've not made any new recordings really apart from one let me bore you to sleep a couple of days back it's getting warm in here now I've got the heating on and it it just comes on randomly it's not on a timer just on random so if it hits below a certain temperature, like 20 degrees or something, it comes on. But it was an okay temperature before. So maybe I need to move it down to 19 degrees. I've got a friend that always used to have it on 17 degrees. I remember him saying, never went below or above 17 degrees. And if the temperature changed from that, the heating would come on if it became lower than 17. Because his theory, or his reason for it, is he found that 17 degrees was an optimum temperature. As you can hear, Andre's decided to... He's climbing through his plastic tube. Bless him. So I've already took, I've took him out for a walk already today. A few hours ago, took him out just before it was, but just before it got dark. So it was around five o'clock. It gets, it's pretty much getting dark by six now. So I took him out, walked him around a block. 
put him down. So I walked him up to the end of the road and I thought, come on, you lazy bugger. You can't get, walk. Walk, go on. So I put him down on the floor and you should have seen how he was walking. He, you know, you see a, like a sheep born for the first time or a, you know, an animal horse born for the first time and it just pops out of its uh, mother's um, bum and and it's like struggling to get up and it's like falling over the place but you know, that's what he was doing. Pretended he couldn't walk. Like making a big dramatic thing about it when he can walk absolutely fine. And he, then he begged me to carry him again. He does this thing where he puts both of his hands together on my leg. And like leans up on my leg if he wants me to carry him. It's just a, a communication that we've got between us. So I, I carry him. And he looked at me. I'm sure he was kind of in his own way. I'm sure he was... He just seemed to be acting smug. Like, ah, got you there. I can walk fine, but you thought I couldn't. Ha, ha, ha. You just care too much. That's your problem, Daddy. You care too much. And I'm thinking, perhaps I just should let go of the lead and let him just run into the fields and just go home, leave him there. <laughs> Eventually, the last little bit of the journey, he wanted to get down and he walked. The last five minutes of the journey and then at one point uh, I was holding him I did put him down for a little bit and the so I have to keep putting it on pause because I need to cough if you hear any weird noise, it's just me putting it on pause because I keep coughing all the time. So I'll have a drink. I'm pretty sure the central heat heating irritates it a little bit. But then I don't want to be cold, you know what I mean? So. A couple of dogs are like playing around. It's really beautiful to watch. They're really having fun with each other. They clearly loved each other. So I pick Andre out because one of excuse me, one of the dogs is kind of eyeing him up. So I pick Andre up and they start talking to me and not the dogs, the people, the humans. And uh, they said. I was just asking about him really, just oh does he have a bit in anyone? I said, No, not not really <laughs> not really. Which is true, I mean, you know, since he was a baby he bit me when he was a baby and but that's it. And they would look in and say, Oh look at his and he was yawning. They said, look at his teeth, they're like razors. And I look at them, they are like razors, but I said, yeah, you should feel the jaw. He's got probably one of the strongest jaws of any animal of his size. And um, and he started scratching at my coat. That's another way he told me he wants to go inside my jacket. So I pull the zip down and he goes in there and starts, basically he just wants to go to sleep. He's so impatient. 
So what, you've got these little, he lets me know what he wants. These little signs. Which is, I think it's quite cute really. So he lets me know when he wants me to carry him. He lets me know when he wants me to let him go. On when he wants to go back down on the floor. Because he wiggles around like a big hairy worm. And then uh, it lets me know when he wants to go into the jacket by scratching at it like a like a little kitten does at, a, at its mum's nipple. You know, they like pat it. And adult cats still do it, don't they? And uh, it's, it's quite cute. Not on nipples, but I mean on. And there's a cat used to do it to me. Used to. Years ago, there was this cat. <clears throat> forget what its name was but it's the only cat I ever bonded with only cat ever that I bonded with that I really for some reason the cat liked me never been a cat person I'm not against cats at all you know I've lived in houses with cats but this is the first time a cat really took to me really kind of I don't know why Anyway, she used to come into my bedroom and I'd lay on my stomach and she'd walk up and down my back like and like, massage my back and it felt so nice. I think sometimes she'd go to sleep on my back which would be a, bit, a little bit awkward because I'd want to move off. So, okay, that's enough now. And But she'd like um, tap her, tap her, uh, her hands on me like she was trying to get a nipple to give her milk and stuff oh by the way if anyone's offended by the word uh, nipple then you really need to sort your life out <laughs> sorry it's really it's like what I'm offended by that word oh come on really <laughs> you know some people do get offended by stuff it amazes me. Uh, just, you know, the little things. I understand when people get offended over something that's big, you know, something uh, hateful. But nipples are not hateful. They're, it's like every... I don't know if every animal in the world has them. I don't know if trees even... Do trees have nipples? The thing is now, all I can think about is nipples. And it's no, it's not any kind of uh, weird perversion. It's really just... Uh, I don't class... I, I just think of it as a... It's all I can think about. It's a nipples. What if I... The dogs. Dogs have nipples, don't they? I think Andre's got a few nipples. Which is weird, because he's a boy. It's not weird that he's got nipples because I'm a boy and I've got nipples. You may say no, but you're a man. Trust me, I've got nothing really. To, <laughs> I think I'm still a boy. I don't. I can't got nothing. I can really. Uh, no concrete evidence of being a man just yet. One day maybe I'll be a man. But I'm a boy. I'm a boy. With a toy. Why the words rhyme with boy other than toy? Noi, goi, woi, proi, joy. I'm a boy with a toy full of joy. Chua, oi, boy, who sometimes says oi. When I want to get past the horse of Troy, <laughs> I don't know. Joy, woy, loy, oi, owie, boy. So that, I've got a gun boy, and I see koi. Oh, sometimes koi. But then that could be a fish, couldn't it? Koi fish. Koi, doi, iwi, e, a 
CDF Foy Goy G H Hoy I U J Joy and that one K Koi but that's different from C isn't it L Loy M Moy N Noi O Oi Oi P Poi Q Kyoi R Roy I'm an yeah I'm a boy named Roy it's full of joy and sometimes I get a bit coy it's Roy soy and I like and in my milk no and in my tea I like some soy uh, S T toy and I, and I like toys toy T S T U U E V voy 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 V V V W V X Xoi Y Yoi That's this next one's gonna be a bit of a shock and I might have to explain it. It's called Z. It's the last letter of the alphabet and Millions and millions of people have, uh, they pronounce it incorrectly. And they're taught in school to pronounce it incorrectly. It's Z, not, and some people think, call it Z. It's not Z, it's Z. That's how it's the correct pronunciation is. So Z, Zoi. And basically, z, that's just like a phonetic way to pronounce it. Maybe it was complicated, because Z is a kind of a weird way to pronounce. It, it's, it sounds normal because, um, well, I was educated correctly. <laughs> no, it sounds normal because that's all I've ever known. It's only really, I think, I'm pretty sure uh, Sesame Street used to use Z, Z, X, Y, Z. Like, no, no, you're wrong. It's Z, you know, but I wonder why that is. I should look into that, Why, why the... Hundreds, hundreds of millions of people say Z instead of Z. And there are young people in this country that say Z in England. Wrongly say Z. That's why JZ, I won't call them JZ, JZ. If it was JZ, it'd be ZEE. -E. J Z E E, then I call him J Z. But if it's just J and just the letter, it's J Z. Those are the facts. Do with what them what you will. I'm just a messenger. Don't blame me. I didn't make it up. I'm just passing on the information. Mr Z. I mean Z. I noticed in a video recently with uh, JZ, he was, they just announced him. I think he was with, not Drake, who's the other one? Um, a superstar. He thinks he's, 
he, well, he's he's very hugely famous because there's a few like rappers that are at the top, isn't there, of their game? J Z, Drake, and that are like just superstars. Um, Who's one married to Kardashian? That one, that 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 um, not Deontay. What do I keep saying, Deontay? Beyonce, Leonte, Yarlonte, Minonte. Brabonte, um, I do like some of his stuff. Obviously, not enough to learn his name, but I just it's gone out of my head for now. But he married the the Kardashian porn star. Um, I forgot what's his name. God, my neighbour's turning the bathroom light on and off, on and off, on and off. Continuously. Just leave the light on. That's what I do. I leave the bathroom light on all the time. At night. Just leave it on. The bathroom lights are noisy. Click, click. Click, click. You shouldn't have to hear a bathroom light from someone else's lavatory in a flat, a separate flat. Shouldn't have to hear that. I mean, even when I've got the bedroom door closed, right, I can hear the bathroom light being turned on and off at night. It's like, the most echoist, the echoiest room in the house is the bathroom. So I've got an idea. Why don't we have the loudest, clickiest light switch in the echoiest room in the house? That's a good idea. And while we're doing that, why don't we put the radiators underneath the windows so all the heat goes out? Yeah. Oh dear. I'm just moaning, aren't I, today? I'm just moaning. I've got to stop moaning. Show some appreciation for myself. I'm not sure if I dreamt it. Or if I actually saw an advert. Somewhere. No. It was a YouTube video. It was a YouTube video. And what it was promoting was... No Nuts November. That's what the, the, the term was he was using. And it's basically an abstination. An abstinent from helping yourself self-service and squeaking the hedgehog whatever you want to call it it's <laughs> milking the giraffe you know basically a whole month of um Keeping your hands busy doing other things. Kind of, you know, for boys, apparently, this thing is. And it showed a p the picture on the cover of the video was two pictures of a, a boy, you know, a, a teenager, young adult, whatever, before and afterwards. Afterwards, it was all healthy and strong and ha happy. 
before it was basically a deflated human flat and just like <laughs> dear, dear I didn't watch the video but I did laugh no nuts November that's what they call it seriously it's a real thing apparently it's like wow I thought I'd seen everything but clearly not no nuts November I used to have a friend that did that when I was uh, living in the Buddhist uh, community he was um <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing. He, um, we all kind of had our thing that we did. So on a Monday we'd meet and maybe one of us would, it wasn't like something that we had to do, but we'd say, oh, for this next week, I'm going to eat less biscuits or I'm going to maybe swear less try and be more generous you know that kinds of things which is a lovely sentiment um, I can't remember if I ever promised to do stuff I might have done whether I kept to it I don't know but it's hard to remember that or what anyone else ever said because of this one person. I won't say his name, but because you could Google him and find out about him. So I'm not going to say his name. And he said, I remember him saying, and he's very funny the way he. Um, I had a lot of time for him but the way he presented his uh, his story structured what he said and what he was planning to do and he said for the next week I'm going to abstain um, we basically say he's going to be celibate Now, when I think of celibacy, well, two things. Firstly, I think of it as being uh, not something I've usually had much choice in. But, you know, celibacy is not having intimate relations with somebody. That's not what he meant. Because I questioned, I said, well... I didn't know you had a girlfriend. And he said, I don't. Now, I knew his room was full of cactuses and various plants. And I pointed that out and he said, why are you mentioning that? I said, I'm not sure really. He said, yeah, you kind of gone on subject a bit, haven't you? I said, I know, but just... What, what, what do you mean celibate he said well I still can't believe he brought the cactuses into it like some kind of a weird thing that I've got going on there I happen to love uh, cactuses or cacti and plants because it's given me fresh air in my bedroom so yeah I think we'll talk about that later oh no I've upset him I said yeah go on about the uh, celibacy though he said, oh yeah, I'm going to abstain from any activity within that sphere. I said, what? And we went back and forward a few times. And then another person in the room said very bluntly it means you're not going to have a 
and then just finish the sentence like, oh, okay, fair enough. Why didn't you just say that? And uh, so every time I saw him during the week, because I used to see him quite regularly at one point, and he'd say, still celibate. And he, um, I think we sat down for for lunch or for dinner, probably about five days later, and he sat down and he was smiling. I said, you are right? He said, yeah. Uh... I've just broken my celibacy a couple of minutes ago. <laughs> it's like, okay, right. It's nice. Now, could you just pass the uh, cream salad so I can put that on my chips? It's like, just, why, why are you telling us while we're eating? I'm no longer celibate. It was just really, and then the next day I'm going to be celibate again. See if I can make it last longer. Because it helps clean my chakras. So I don't know if that's true. Don't know much about um, cleaning anything really. But uh, he is one of the most spiritual people I've met. Like really seriously, seriously spiritual. I've met a lot, and he even went off to be a guru of his own teachings, and uh, has written books and everything. He was teaching on an island in the Caribbean or somewhere, or Sweden, somewhere like that. So it, <laughs> my geography really is bad. <laughs> it's been pointed out to me that maybe uh, I could do a few geography lessons <laughs> but um, I kind of miss him sometimes I remember he phoned he moved out and he very much into meeting someone to be in love with very romantic person and he was doing a lot of online dating long before it was popular. And this was, uh, this was like 12 years ago or something. 50, yeah, 13, 13 years ago. And he, he met someone online and went and traveled to see them and they lived the other side of the country. So he ended up moving out of the community and then I got a message from someone saying to me he's in trouble I said what he said, he said yeah he's on a mountain somewhere it's, it's like in I think in Scotland or somewhere he's on a mountain and he's homeless and he's and I thought what so I phoned him it couldn't have been a high mountain because it got a good reception. And I said, what's going on? And he said, yeah, I've got frostbite in my, f- my toes. The relationship didn't work out. And now I'm living in a tent on a, it's only a little mountain. And I said, I said, come home then. He said, haven't you got to ask the other people? I said, Probably. But come home anyway. And I said, look, here's a situation. Even if they don't want you back, you'll still stay here as my guest. You can stay in my room on the floor if it comes to it. Um, Because he was, he didn't leave in bad terms or anything. He just left to go and be with someone. And, uh, So he ended up, he came back the next day, came back on his motorbike, 
and his foot was all over it. That's, that's not funny, but his foot was wrapped up. And I think he went to the hospital and got treated and stuff. Could Andre make even more noise? Seriously. So what I did is I got a little meeting together the, that day after speaking to him on the phone. And I said, uh, what's his name? Is in need of help he's homeless and he's living in a tent this was I think January so it's like coldest month of the year pretty much and uh, they said well we should have a meeting we should have a meeting about and have a vote about whether we let him come back and I said no vote he's coming back that's it <laughs> and they just gave in I said he's coming back he's our friend and he's coming back and that's that's all there is to it and I said I'll cover the rent for his room if if it's if you need me to because I was working and everything I said this is our friend you can't leave someone especially when you've got an empty room what the heck but we must have a vote because he left us for a lady <laughs> it's like Really? Oh man. And he came back. And the thing is, he was probably the most devoted person to the thing. When he was there, he was so devoted to the. Because he was in the shrine room every morning. And, you know, he was very devoted to the, to the community. I was more. I did I did my bit I think but I was working full time in insurance and I think living there really helped me until a problematic person moved in and well a you know, clash clash of personalities or whatever and I ended up moving out but that's another story that I'm never going to tell because it's not a happy story. I was just talking and Alexa started. Some big loud thing about Mars or whatever. Stupid thing. What on earth was that about? So I'm going to have to go back. What time was it? 43 minutes in. I have to go back and edit that out. Which I can't be bothered to do. See, so, yeah, Andre's... He was climbing all over the thing, so I think he might have triggered something. He just won't sit still for two seconds. Yeah, he's asleep for hours and hours and hours. But when he's awake, man... Like he's on speed or something. I think living in the Buddhist community was helpful for me. It softened me. Um, I think. When I, mean, I was there from March. 2005 until November 2007 so I was there for a while and as far as a shared house goes it's one of the best places I've lived for a shared place because I was I got on well with most of the people that lived there apart from that one person I moved in near the end but I got on really well with everyone else and I become really really close with uh, an order member that who was he was ordained and it was he'd lived there for a long time so I've became really close with him and I said I got on I'd say I got on most of the time with everyone 
and it was a fairly big room that's when I started doing the hypnosis free stuff you know the audios and the videos online so it was uh, it was quite a nice memorable kind of time for me the only time that I didn't enjoy was the last couple of months but before that in fact it might have just been the last month really but which is a little bit annoying, well, a lot annoying at the time, but I had a girlfriend and then I had a part-time job in Sainsbury's that I had yet to start and I just started my university degree. And of course I had somewhere to live and I had a student loan and stuff. So it was all kind of worked out perfectly and um, well you know it's perfect it was it's wor it worked out so I had an income I had a, a nice girlfriend it was still early stages there but we'd been together for a couple of months and then all kind of went a bit wrong and I ended up I couldn't find a room in the town that I was living in because of the, the small amount of money I was on I couldn't afford the the rents were just way higher than I'd been paying in the community and I kind of because I hadn't I hadn't fitted that into the 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 plan you know to be paying an extra 150 200 pound a month uh, for rent so I ended up moving to Colchester and I found rent that was about the same as what I was paying in the other town I was living in. But it was a tiny little, such a small little room it was. Um, not enough room for my books. So my books were in plastic containers stacked up to the ceilings. And my girlfriend left me. <laughs> it's, it's like, what? She got the hump with me because I moved away. However, when I told her that I, was, I needed to find somewhere to live because of the situation, she said, well, have you tried calling up the college and seeing if they can suggest anywhere? Which I did, and they suggested the place that I looked at. So they, it was her idea. Unless she was just pretending to... Well, maybe that's her plan, I don't know. And then... I contacted Sainsbury's and asked them if I could transfer the job to the Colchester branch and they said no. <laughs> it's like, okay, brilliant, yay. Uh, so that all kind of went a bit, it was weird, what a weird time. But I think the good thing about, one of the good things about life, I think, is what's come through it. Always come through it, always come out the other end in some form or another. You know, the amount of times in the past when I was younger and well, everything was when I was younger, and I was think, oh no, it's the end, and what am I going to be doing? I've got no food, money, I've got no nowhere to live, and a year later, I'm still here got somewhere I'm living somewhere I've clearly eaten enough to keep me alive for, next, for the last year it's just things turn around always always turn around things always come I don't know if it's full circle but things work out in the end maybe not exactly how we want it but they work out in a way Which I find quite, uh, I don't know, quite, I don't know if exciting is the word, but positive, optimistic, that things will be okay, not just for me, but for all of us.
because you know when I first started that university course which was the biggest challenge I had ever undertaken in my adult life to this day it's still the biggest challenge I've ever taken and I accomplished it I succeeded but I didn't think I was going to and just as that was starting I was starting this three year journey into the unknown into education that the one thing that like formal education a thing that I really didn't like I never enjoyed at school never enjoyed learning I just didn't enjoy being at school and just going back to that classroom setting meeting new people just you know all these things and at the same time losing like my girlfriend and my where I was living and that stability all within like a month of, of each other it's like ah, uh, and I still managed to get through it with help. And time is amazing. It's an amazing thing. And I'm hoping that I'm going to be doing a master's degree next year. I'm a hoping, I'm a hopey whoopying. But it's just, it's amazing, really. Just, you know, I remember 1990, what year was it? 1918, it's a few moments. Because I used to live in a town that had a pier, loved the pier. I used to go and stand on the pier and have the wind blowing against me and I used to love it and I remember standing there in 1989 I had to move out of the place I was living in I didn't have a job didn't know what I was going to do and I kept singing Blame It On The Boogie by Michael Jackson for some reason that song kept coming into the into my head so I was singing it don't blame it on the sunshine don't blame it on the moonlight blame it on the boy and I kept singing it and I remember standing on the pier thinking what am I going to do what am I going to do Blame it on the boogie, blame it on the boogie. So I thought, maybe I should just blame it on the boogie. And uh, so I walked into town, up the hill. That's in the days that I could walk up hills. I can, I can walk up hills with a bit of uh, notice, or three weeks' notice, ideally. And I went into the job centre. Those were the days when you could go into a job centre, you could pick a card from the window, which had a job description, you could take it to the person sitting down on a table, they weren't sitting on a table, there was a chair, and they would phone up the company and say, I've got a lovely young man here, he's ever so enthusiastic, he'd really like to have an interview if that's okay, please, mister. I think he'd be a great uh, addition to your company's workforce. And I got the interview, so I went along. And it's for this uh, tank freight company, haulage company. Had an interview. And he said, have you got any questions? And I said, yeah, when do I start? And I think he said, well, he either said, oh, I think he told me, yeah, you can start. I think he just said, yeah, start Monday. And I did. And I went to my dad and I told him that I had a job. 
but I had nowhere to live. And, and having the job was, I think that was the main thing for him. So he, he let me stay with him for a while. So I moved in there, started on Monday. It turned out I was working at the same place as my dad. He was in the actual farm bit, the looking after the tanks, and I was in the haulage department. So all within one afternoon, I went from being homeless to having a job and having somewhere to stay. And it's, it's things like that, just like, oh, things do work out. They do work out in the end. Not always perhaps how we expected, but that's more likely to happen with focus and goals and doing something, you know, to... to create those changes and to you know to manoeuvre to the place you want to be I suppose but yeah I do I do like the idea that things work out okay in the end I suppose I'm a bit in, not insightful I'm a bit thinky I'm a bit <laughs> thinky a bit thinky today is spent a lot of time laying in bed and it feels nice to to just be dealing with the physical side which is a bit nicer it's a bit easier to deal with so I don't know whether it's I don't know why it's a virus or whatever it's I've got but feels nice to just deal with that part of it just the physical have a little bit a little bit of clarity in my mind. A little bit of motivation to make recordings. Because I haven't had hardly any for the week. It's almost like my my brain has started working again. It's quite nice. It's still not <laughs> it's not full action at the moment. However, I don't feel I really feel that I want to go to bed, which is nice. I'd love to stay up late. Even one o'clock. And that's kind of the ideal situation in a sense. Going to bed at one in the morning, waking up at nine in the morning. I'm going to have to go because I just keep coughing keep putting it on mute on mute or pause when I cough but it's uh, it's hurting my chest a little bit so uh, it's only because I'm talking that I'm coughing it's like the whole thing isn't it 
only hurts when I laugh. So I'm going to go and I'm going to have to edit it at, was it 48 minutes when Alexa started shouting and whatever. What a weird technology that is. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for listening. Please remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love.